We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Okay, so uh, we're going to start uh, our open forum. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, uh, very welcome to IGF uh, open forum on promoting uh, common understanding on global data governance. Uh, my name is Yoichi Ida, uh, Deputy Director General for G7, G20 and multilateral affairs uh, at the Japanese Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications. I'm also serving as chair at OECD Committee on Digital Economy Policy. So uh, I'm very happy to serve uh, as moderator today. And uh, uh, we would like to hold one hour uh, discussion on current issues on data flow and data governance in the global internet environment. And we have uh, very excellent speakers uh, with us. Uh, so uh, we have uh, Ms. Uh, Goshia Logi from UK and uh, Ms. Audrey Plonk uh, from OECD, uh, Dr. Anne Christine uh, Sukadar uh, from Germany, and uh, Dr. Uh, Mark Yokozawa from uh, in, uh, uh, International uh, Economic uh, Collaboration of Japan. And uh, uh, in uh, Katowice, uh, we have uh, Ms. Timia Suto from International uh, Chamber of Commerce. So in this session, uh, we will discuss the recent development uh, of the policy discussion on cross-border data flow uh, with a particular focus on the concept of data free flow with trust. Uh, which uh, was proposed uh, by the Japanese government two years ago. And also we discuss uh, broader aspects of data governance. Uh, and uh, uh, as well, we also uh, share our expectation for further challenges and progresses in the coming years to, uh, uh, in the, uh, during the years to come. So as many of you here today uh, may be well aware, uh, our government of Japan proposed the concept of data free flow with trust uh, on the occasion of G20 Osaka summit two years ago. The purpose of this proposal was to facilitate international discussion on the relationship between data flow and the trust in the digital economy. Our belief uh, is data should be utilized to full extent to maximize the benefit of digitalization or digital society. And for that purpose, data should flow as free as possible, but in order to ensure such an enabling environment where every company, every citizen, uh, every uh, single person can participate in digital economy without concern. We need policy measures and business practices to ensure trust through privacy protection, security implementation, consumer protection, and uh, all uh, different uh, measures and practices to, to improve uh, uh, trust uh, in data and the digital economy. So from that sense, uh, freedom and trust are not in trade-off, but both should work in complementary relations and we need to promote synergy between these two elements. This is a fundamental concept of DFFT, and it is a very high level uh, policy objective. In order to transform this high level uh, concept into actionable formation, the UK presidency of G7 uh, worked out uh, for DFFT roadmap this year. And uh, uh, we know OECD and the other fora are also promoting policy discussions to promote uh, data flow and the data governance. So uh, to discuss uh, and uh, exchange our views and uh, expectations, uh, first, uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, Ms. Goshia Logi to look back at the achievements under the uh, 
UK presidency uh, at G7 this year, and also give us some uh, insight uh, at the further uh, progress. Gosia is the head of global governance and the G7 uh, presidency unit, international directorate at the uh, Department of Digital, Culture, Media and Sports uh, in UK uh, government. So Gosia, please. Thank you very much, Eiji, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Uh, I'm very, very pleased to be here with you today, and um, thank you so much to the Japanese government for this opportunity to join the panel and also for hosting this session. Um, it's a shame we can't be all together in Poland uh, today, but I hope we can still enjoy a fruitful discussion, um, and I hope to give you a little bit of an insight into not only what we agreed on at the G7 uh, this year, but also what we've achieved since uh, the declaration was signed in April at the digital and tech track. Um, and part of that declaration, um, the data free flow with trust uh, roadmap for cooperation uh, has been one of the six agreements that we reached uh, during the G7 under the UK leadership. And I hope that as they, um, uh, in, the, in the last 12 months, we have been able to show uh, leadership on much of this agenda, especially with the concrete um, uh, achievements that we've done throughout the implementation of a, of a number of series um, of workshops and, and wide, wide range events to implement the roadmap. Um, I just firstly also wanted to acknowledge the efforts that the G7 members together with partners um, have achieved uh, to progress this agenda and to build on, on Japan's leadership and vision following um, the Japan's G20 presidency in 2019. Um, through our UK's presidency, we were able to, to reach tangible commitments um, and we focus on four components of the roadmap uh, for cooperation on data free flow with trust. Um, firstly, we uh, focus on regulatory relationships and we uh, tried since, since that commitment create a stronger uh, relationship with regulations and, and regulatory um, uh, authorities and especially in terms of global information sharing that hopefully in the long term uh, will better inform um, businesses and, and the wider community on the global data protection regimes and, and how to act within them. So one of the key um, agreements uh, we've had since April uh, was around uh, the meeting of the data protection authorities of the G7 uh, partners, um, an agreement to cooperate and explore possible closer cross regulatory corporations in different specific areas. Uh, these included online tracking, AI, pandemic driven tech innovation, um, government access to data, but also a commitment to progress initiatives at the international level with wider community, especially including uh, the G20, and to continue meeting regularly to exchange. Um, we also had a regulatory cooperation workshop of policymakers as well as national regulators, um, and that meeting especially focused on the considerations around um, the interoperability of global privacy frameworks. Um, the second component included the data localization measures, um, and we tried to promote global discussions around the issues that concern data localization and, um, and the just barriers and unjust barriers to data flows uh, due to the, such measures. Um, so one of the events we've hosted uh, since April has been a roundtable with uh, businesses, especially on identification of impacts of uh, the telecolization measures on micro, small and medium enterprises and looking into what alternative policy responses uh, we could find to mitigate such measures and uh, especially um, uh, the work of OECD in supporting um, these consequences, uh, th th this, this policy area uh, needs to be acknowledged here um, on the um, work around the consequences of data localization and further understanding the opportunities to help facilitate uh, facilitate future future interventions. The third component um, we focus on is speci especially with the uh, regards to trusted government access to data uh, held by the private sector. Um, and this is one of the um, instruments we are in the process of uh, developing under the OECD's uh, work. And we hope to be able in the long term to remove barriers to commercial cross-border data flows, uh, but especially with an increasing trust component, um, ensuring that there is a legitimate government access to that data for uh, law enforcement and national security purposes. And then lastly, um, we also focused on um, policy exchanges on data sharing, and we sought to enhance collective understanding um, of that data sharing issues. Um, we hope to be able to promote opportunities for innovation 
And, and with that in mind, uh, we've had a couple of workshops, including on identifying priority sectors uh, where we can find novel data sharing solutions to empower uh, consumers to drive competition and, for example, meet uh, net zero targets. Um, and we also held an expert-led forum to consider how nations are responding to uh, barriers to accessing and sharing data through the use of intermediaries. Um, I also wanted to uh, mention an event that uh, we uh, held last week out of the G7 uh, meeting um, of leaders in June, um, the Future Tech Forum, which um, uh, was wider than only the G7 partners and included um, a host of different governments, including the G20, OECD members, uh, but also uh, brought together international partners from industry, academia, civil society. Um, and uh, one of our sessions that we hosted there was specifically focused on the future of trust in data as a force for good. Um, and we included an example of how data um, can support uh, on the example of um, data use in the health sector, um, innovative solutions to, uh, to health um, related measures with the use of trusted data. Um, so uh, we are still uh, looking forward to having uh, future discussions. And of course, there's a lot more to do. And so building on the data preflow with trust roadmap will be a key component for us in years to come. Um, we hope to be able to continue working with the G7 partners, including including with uh, Germany as an ex-presidency and then following with Japan, uh, but also with, um, with the G20, of course, we've already made progress this year and we're looking forward to discussing this with um, Indonesia next year. Uh, and then also for the UK, there's also an opportunity uh, uh, to work with the Commonwealth uh, countries as a forum to help assist developing and emerging economies in this uh, respect. Um, and I also would like to just acknowledge uh, the leadership from the OECD as well through different initiatives relating to especially uh, anti-data localization mandates and also enhanced regulatory cooperation, uh, which will be key hopefully to unlock uh, barriers to global data flow. Um, so let me pause here for now and I hope to be able to uh, continue the discussion during uh, the panel session. Um, I hope this gave you a little bit more of an insight to what we've done uh, this year through the G7 presidency on the roadmap for cooperation on data free flow with trust. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the very uh, detailed explanation and uh, presentation of, on the uh, UK's uh, perspective. Uh, actually, my impression is, you know, over the last uh, two years uh, since 2019, uh, many people were uh, wondering, uh, you know, we could agree on the very high level concept of DFFT, but uh, how we can uh, uh, action uh, act make it into actionable uh, uh, measures. And uh, one of the answers was uh, presented by the UK government in a very beautiful fo uh, formation. And uh, uh, what was good uh, for the government of Japan was the discussion, uh, uh, domestic discussion on our national data policy was, uh, 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 was going in parallel with the discussion at G7. So our national data strategy was elaborated in this June. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, some, a lot of commonalities with the G7 roadmap, but we have some uh, differences, of course. And it is very interesting to see the commonalities and the differences. And we see a lot of uh, work to be done uh, uh, in the future. So thank you very much for the uh, presentation. And now I want to turn to uh, Dr. Uh, Ann Christine uh, Sukadao, uh, the head of uh, division for international digital and the postal policy, G7 and the G20, and the internet governance uh, at uh, German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and the Energy. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Anne Christian uh, to share us uh, uh, the uh, Germany's uh, 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 over, uh, the uh, insight and also the expectation for the further work uh, or evaluation on, on this uh, year's achievement. So uh, uh, Anne Christian, please take the floor. Thank you very much, Yuchi, and for organizing uh, this panel and for giving me the opportunity to to speak to. Uh, you today. Um, as uh, Yuti and uh, Gosha have highlighted already, data governance and data free flow with trust are of utmost importance for our economies and for our societies. And 
because both are more and more relying on access to data, the use of data, and therefore, of course, the flow of data. At the same time, we find an international patchwork of regulations on cross-border data flows. And this patchwork is posing a challenge not only to enforce public policy goals, but also for businesses which would like to profit from the opportunities of a global digital economy. And Germany therefore very much appreciated that Japan had put data free flow with trust on the table for the G20 in uh, 2019, and that uh, since then the G20 have continued this work. Now the Ind Indonesian G20 presidency will also promote this important topic. And in the G7 context, uh, UK has pushed data governance and it's very successful G7 presidency this year. As Goja has already pointed out, uh, the G7 made an important step and agreed on, on a roadmap uh, on cooperation on uh, data free flow with trust. And as part of this uh, roadmap, um, the G7 worked to accelerate the de uh, development of mutually acceptable data sharing practices for priority sectors. And we collected evidence on the economic and societal impacts of data localization measures. And we made further progress in terms of mapping commonalities in regulatory approaches to data transfer with the help of the OECD. And we were also concerned with government access to data held uh, by the private sector. And just last week, as uh, Gosha said, at the Future Tech Forum in London, we had very, very interesting discussions about, about data as a force for good and the importance of public trust. So uh, what do, does all this mean for the upcoming uh, German G7 presidency? So when I speak about our presidency, I first have uh, to give a little caveat. As you might know, uh, Germany um, held elections in September and the new chancellor will be elected by parliament today. And it is only afterwards that a new minister competent uh, for digitalization will take office. Therefore, anything that I can outline as you as our current uh, planning is preliminary only and, and might be subject to, to changes. However, what uh, we would like to propose to the new minister is to continue the G7's work in unlocking uh, the potential of data for the economy and for the society. And in this effort, we would like uh, to, to take our commonalities as a starting point. Um, and there are a lot of commonalities. And I am sure um, Audrey uh, will elaborate on the very interesting study, studies which the OECD has uh, undertaken in this regard. And on the basis of these commonalities, um, we could uh, be building bridges between the different approaches aiming as a final goal to harmonize relevant framework. This is, uh, of course, uh, a long way to go. And it is clear that the prerogative to choose mechanisms that best serve national policy interests is with each government. However, um, what we could try to do is to initiate an approximation process that tries to align essential rules for international data transfer. And our aim would be to create a level playing field to promote global data traffic and to spur both um, innovations and uh, cost benefits for consumer and businesses. So this in a nutshell would be what we are thinking about for our G7 presidency with regard to govern, um, data governance. However, as I said, um, all up to the decision of a new minister for digitalization. And it will also be very interesting to see how the discussions in the G7 process will be influenced by the discussions in the G20 um, uh, process in another international fora, because it is clear that the, the digital economy is a global one and the societies uh, connect globally. So even if I have outlined now our preliminary thinking for one of the smaller international fora, the G7 for us, a global and inclusive approach is the way forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Christian, uh, for your uh, sharing the views uh, uh, on uh, next year's uh, uh, your presidency. And uh, uh, it is uh, very uh, inspiring to know uh, your new chancellor is uh, decided uh, uh, selected today. 
and we look forward to further collaboration between not only between our two governments but also uh, globally uh, among G7 and also as you said among uh, uh, the uh, inclusive uh, uh, community uh, of the global uh, digital uh, society so thank you very much for your uh, 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 presentation and now uh, we heard a lot of voices uh, uh, talking about the OECD's contribution to the uh, G7 discussions. And I know uh, the discussions and the uh, uh, products uh, from uh, uh, different committees, uh, uh, including CDEP, uh, have been uh, contributing uh, uh, enormously to the uh, this, uh, policy discussion progress, uh, not only at the G7, but also G20 and even others. So I would like to invite uh, Audrey uh, to share uh, us uh, we, uh, the uh, current uh, uh, development uh, and, uh, of the discussion at OECD and also uh, uh, some, some uh, perspective uh, for the future work. Audrey is head of the Digital Economy, uh, Digital Economy Policy Division at Directorate for Science, Technology and Innovation uh, at uh, OECD. So Audrey, please take the floor. Thank you, Yoichi, and hello to everyone. It's um, great to be with you today. Um, just to say a little bit about the OECD's work um, on data governance and data flows, uh, the OECD privacy guidelines that date back to 1980 provide a foundational framework and baseline by which um, most of the world's countries have built their privacy uh, regimes and frameworks and, and laws around. Um, in the context of those guidelines, there are some known exceptions to where they apply. And one of those exceptions is around uh, uh, law enforcement, national security, and public order. And those exceptions um, back in the 1980s probably made a lot of sense, but uh, and, and not that the exceptions don't make sense, but that the need for more common understanding around uh, the exceptions to the guidelines has been illustrated through the work of the G7 as well as um, and various other policy debates. And so the OECD is working to try to fill the gap of international instruments that look at how governments access data when held by the private sector, what common approaches exist uh, in policy and in practice, and how we might articulate those commonalities in order to build trust among OECD member countries. Uh, that's an obviously an important uh, piece of the data flows puzzle, but it's not the only piece. Um, uh, but we see very much that the worlds uh, that used to be once distinct from one another are increasingly intertwined uh, and that the commercial and economic import of data flows is now dependent on, on other aspects like uh, trust among governments and how they access uh, particularly personal data and when held in the private sector. So our objective is to, um, to advance discussions within the OECD membership about how those data are accessed and under what regimes um, and to articulate commonalities among our countries so that uh, trust could be increased and hopefully data uh, can, uh, can continue to flow or be allowed to flow. Um, I'll mention another important project, uh, which this, the, the one I just mentioned is, is part of, uh, which is a project uh, across the organization that my team is responsible for looking at data governance for growth and well-being. And um, it, it really builds on much of the, many of the themes that the previous speakers uh, raised, which is this understanding that the data are non-rival at risk, that they're an economic resource, and that they're important to advance economies uh, going forward. Um, and they, they, in order to, to reap the benefits that uh, access to and sharing of data, both within jurisdictions across uh, across stakeholder groups, but across borders is, is important and perhaps a prerequisite for the growth that we believe is possible from uh, from the data, the sort of data society that we live in today. Um, and so this project really brings together expertise from across the organization, um, all the way from our health committee colleagues to our trade committee colleagues, uh, to the economists that work on national accounts, um, to try to understand really important 
the answers to some important questions like, you know, how should we think about the value of data to the economy? How should we measure it? How should we measure it? Um, how can we factor that into policy? How can data be shared, uh, particularly in the cases of crises like COVID? Um, and uh, what taxonomy should we use to think about um, uh, different kinds of data and how to, to access and use them? What role data play in innovation and in productivity and advancing um, small and medium businesses, but also firms more, more generally? Um, and then finally, how we how we trade and, and share data across borders. And so our, our intent with this work, which should terminate at the end of next year, about a year from now, is to develop a, a, a guide for policymakers and how to understand and think about the various opportunities and trade-offs uh, to be made in policies for uh, thinking uh, holistically about, about governing data. Um, we hope that that will um, provide an important contribution to, to, to the global dialogue uh, well beyond the OECD and its membership and that it can be a, a, a step forward in um, identifying other areas, particularly areas where additional evidence base and, and data, <laughs> not, not data for data flows, but information uh, to, to build our evidence and understanding of data uh, could be uh, could be gained and advanced in order to better understand both the problems and, and the opportunities. Um, so with that, I'll turn it back to you, Yoichi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much uh, for your very comprehensive uh, presentation. And uh, actually, uh, uh, to, to talk a little bit about my personal uh, experience, uh, I was uh, in the secretariat very long time ago, 30 years ago, uh, when the uh, committee was called Information, Computer and Communication Policy Committee, and division was uh, also in the, uh, with the same name. At the time, discussion was uh, 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 very much advanced, uh, similar uh, with the uh, current uh, uh, CDEP uh, discussion, but uh, the coverage and the influence of the committee is very different. At the time, the ICCP committee was a kind of very te uh, technical uh, discussions and very small community, but uh, now CDEP uh, covers a so wide range of uh, issues and topics, uh, as Audrey said, across the uh, organization and uh, we were, uh, uh, work uh, together uh, with uh, so many experts from different uh, fields, uh, including health, uh, education, uh, transport, whatever. So uh, it is. Uh, it it uh, apparently means that the digitalization uh, uh, is going on and permeating through the uh, society and economy, and the uh, importance of digital technology is increasing uh, day after day. So thank you very much for the uh, 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 sharing the. Uh, 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 your experience, and now I turn to the private sector, uh, because uh, you know we are always uh, uh, making our efforts uh, to to advance our policies, and uh, uh, one of the uh, objectives, or maybe the the most important objective, is. Uh, we want to know how to flourish our economy and society through digitalization, the digital technology and the policy. And, uh, but uh, we uh, always need to know uh, what the business and the civil society uh, need uh, from the policy. So uh, it is always uh, important to, to discuss uh, in the multi-stakeholder participation. So now uh, today we have uh, two uh, participants, speakers from uh, business and uh, tech uh, communities. So first, I would like to invite Dr. Mark Yokozawa, uh, who is a representative of International uh, Economic Collaboration uh, uh, Institution uh, uh, in, in Japan. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Yokozawa, what is the evaluation uh, of the business society, uh, community uh, on the current policy uh, discussion progress? And what is the expectation for the further, uh, future work? Please. Thank you, Ida-san. And 
Thank you very much for the very nice uh, uh, speech from the three representatives from the government side. And yes, uh, I was very much impressed that the, the, uh, the ongoing issue is, uh, has the continuity uh, from, uh, for, for the several years. This is a very, very important thing. So uh, the, the, when we started uh, the, the G7 discussion and G20 discussion, so uh, the, the, uh, the need for the continuous discussion, continuous momentum is very, very important to business. And uh, I think there are already very interesting discussion going on. Um, and from business side, I would emphasize that business always hope the regulatory framework uh, coherent and not fragmented. And also the uh, no excess regulation, but respect of the voluntary accountability from the private in, in the private sector. And also the, the regulation must be risk-based and no duplication of the regulations. So uh, these are very, very important elements inside the world trust. Uh, and always the baseline of our position when we talk about our, 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 uh, <clears throat> our position in at OECD and many other occasions of the data related discussion. So um, in, in this main, in this time, I, I think that all, all the all the participants here is well recognize the importance of the trust and the uh, how we can promote the data free flow with trust uh, in the in in the in the in this uh, continuous way. So and the uh, and I also want to emphasize that the whole stakeholders cooperation is also a part of trust. So uh, I have, we have heard that the, the, from the government side, there is some uh, very good collaboration and continuous work. But how about the stakeholders cooperation? As yoichi san said uh, a few minutes ago, that's, that's very important to emphasize. It's not only the government, but also the business, civil society, and tech communities can be involved in this our data free flow discussion. And um, let me talk uh, a little bit about the, the, uh, the, the taxonomy of trust, which I am always thinking of. So uh, the, the what is trust is maybe the next step of our discussion in the coming years in 2022 and 23. So um, this is my uh, only my hypothesis, but uh, the the, I, we can and demonstrate in, 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 in just like in this way that the uh, digital will be a common tool for a humanity to make trust a new social principle. It is up to users to decide whether to use the digital or as a tool for, for, for just a efficiency. Or, or just a silver bullet to enhance humanity. Trust will be necessary to, for digital to become the driving force of the new post-corona, uh, after-corona global economy. This is the first point. And the second point is governance based uh, on trust will enable companies to increase productivity and reduce risk. This is a very uh, important meaning of trust for a private sector. Business transactions without trust requires a broad uncertainty. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, we, we have to know each other's background, inclu including the uh, economic foundations and the capital relationships and the stability of their business and understanding of the human rights and the global environment or a diversity recognition. So uh, the, by having a trust, we can skip many of these complex uh, procedures. And the last one is the losing trust is fatal risk for businesses. So uh, one company lose, if one, com one, com one company loses uh, trust of its consumers, uh, it may lose the business space sometimes to the point of not being uh, able to recover. So uh, this, uh, this should be a very important aspect of the trust 
and the element of the trust. So uh, I would like to explain, extend this discussion to the non-OECD countries or non-G7 countries, as uh, uh, the Anne Christine has mentioned, the G20 may be the, the neighborhood of neighbor of us, and also the APEC ASEAN and African economies and Latin America must be included in this DFFT discussion. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yokozawa, and uh, uh, pointing out the very important uh, uh, points of uh, business perspectives. And uh, yes, uh, multi-stakeholder uh, participation is very, very important uh, in the policy discussion, uh, in, especially in the, the, this digital and uh, uh, data policy. And the, uh, this uh, uh, IGF uh, uh, forum, um, uh, it's uh, uh, the most typical and uh, representative uh, 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 platform for uh, all stakeholders to join, get together and discuss and uh, uh, find, explore the way to take action uh, together. So I hope uh, this, way, this year, uh, unfortunately, the uh, COVID uh, uh, prevented uh, many people, including my, including myself, to to travel and see each other uh, uh, on site. But uh, we keep uh, working together, and uh, uh, we we believe a multi stakeholder approach will uh, produce a lot of power uh, uh, to the uh, digital policy uh, formation. So now uh, I would like to invite Miss uh, Timia Suto. Uh, the uh, ICC Knowledge uh, Solution Manager uh, from International Chamber of Commerce. And uh, she has a, lo uh, uh, a long history of experience uh, working uh, to, to contribute to IGF. So uh, based on your uh, experience, uh, how do you evaluate the current uh, progress and the current situation, or uh, how do you uh, expect uh, the uh, further work uh, by uh, multi stakeholders at IGF. So, uh, Timia, please. Thank you, Yoichi san, and Jin Dobre. Good morning, everyone from Poland. That's the only word I learned this week. <laughs> Um, but thank you very much for the invitation um, to this session to um, to be here uh, with you all. I, I wish you were all here with me on the panel. The seats are saved for you. Um, Thank you, uh, first of all, for the opportunity for the International Chamber of Commerce to um, to be part of this conversation. Um, we sincerely appreciate the, the government of Japan for putting DFFT on the global policy agenda at the G20 summit back in 2019. Um, and as we're talking about data, I just want to take a quick moment to put some numbers um, uh, to illustrate uh, why why this is so important, why data free flow is so important for businesses, but for all of us. Um, as you know, data transfers are estimated to contribute around 2.8 trillion US dollars to the global GDP, um, which is a share that exceeds the global trading goods, um, and it's expected to grow um, to around 11 trillion by, by 2025. Um, and this value is shared by um, not only the digital industry, but by traditional industries like agriculture and logistics and manufacturing, which in fact contribute about 75% um, to this value uh, of data transfers. And with around 60% of GDP um, expected to be digitized by 2022, disruptions in this cross-border data flows will, will have very broad reverberations um, that can lead to um, reduced gains, reduced investments in local markets, job losses, which consequently mean welfare losses and uh, other adverse impacts um, for the local and national um, digital ecosystems. So looking at our shared experience under COVID uh, this year and last year, um, it has clearly demonstrated why the value um, of this international data flows, global data flows is so important. And we've seen how international organizations um, share data and collaborated to try and mitigate the myriad of challenges that this pandemic has posed for all of us. Um, so trusting cross-border data flows um, is very critical, as you've seen, um, for social and economic importance um, to organizations of all sizes, um, to the private, but also to the public sector, um, and increasingly so in this, this evolving pandemic situation that reminds us of this value every day. 
Um, trust in data flows is, is being eroded, as many of my colleagues here on the panel said, over concerns that um, you know, demands from governments to access data held by the private sector may conflict with universal human rights and freedoms, including privacy rights, or um, causing concerns and conflicts with domestic laws when um, such data access transcedes borders. Um, these um, increased concerns and reduced trust um, have more far-reaching consequences. They can they, they lead to uncertainty that discourages individuals, businesses, even governments from fully participating in the digital economy um, and has a negative impact on, on the inclusive economic development that we, we are all talking about, especially now um, trying to recover from, from the pandemic's uh, economic effects. Um, so the lack of common principles on, on trusted government access to data um, results um, in this increased barriers um, to data flows, um, which not only um, contribute to the lack of trust, but um, contribute to um, increased data localization measures as well, um, which, which create their own sets of challenges to businesses who wish to operate um, across borders. Um, so for this reasons, and let me be the uh, fifth one to remind of the OECD's valued work um, in, in, this, in this topic, business strongly supports um, the initiative of the OECD to develop common principles um, on trusted government access to personal data um, by identifying shared safeguards uh, practiced by like-minded countries and capturing them as principles that can serve as a foundation to enable broader global dialogue on data free flow with trust. Um, agreements on such safeguards will bring about a more predictable environment for global data flows, enabling the current pace of digital transformation to be maintained at a time when economic recovery is of top mind for governments around the world. The OECD is, is, a, unique, um, is a unique place. Um, uh, it's, it's a really appropriate forum for this work because member states there share the democratic values and commitments to the rights and freedoms of individuals, including privacy, um, and they share common interests, including in preventing, investing, and prosecuting serious crime and in addressing national security threats. Um, and the OECD this way could be the first to set a baseline of international standards and norms um, for trusted government access to data held by the private sector instead of from foundation for further progress on data free flows with trust. Um, so business really supports the continuation and successful completion of the OECD process and hope for timely and publicly visible interim outcomes as well um, uh, that are informed with a broad range of experts um, in national security and law enforcement uh, and privacy, um, both from businesses and, and civil um, society organizations in the respective member states. Um, so the International Chamber of Commerce is really ready to provide uh, input into this process to the OECD, um, as well as evidence on behalf of businesses that we work with worldwide um, to assist this work, um, both in evaluating existing uh, practices and in developing the policy guidelines that we're all hoping for in this matter. So thank you very much for um, the opportunity to contribute here. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to respond. Thank you very much, uh, Chimria san uh, for your uh, perspective uh, from uh, business and uh, uh, civil society community uh, experience. So uh, now uh, we have uh, uh, 50 minutes left, and I would like to invite uh, some of the audience uh, to make uh, any comments or questions uh, to speakers or to 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 rest of the world, and uh, if you have any comments or questions, please use uh, the uh, hand raising uh, function of the Zoom or uh, uh, type in chat box. Uh, but uh, uh, if you can, uh, please raise your hand and uh, speak out. In the meantime, uh, from the different uh, uh, all the five presentations, I, I found you know the uh, everybody believes in the power of digital uh, technology and the digitalization. This uh, it is the democratic uh, technology to empower the people and the trust uh, must be a kind of passport to the digital uh, society and the economy. So. Uh, to, to increase the uh, trust, uh, the data flow and the uh, participation into the digital uh, society must be more smooth and the uh, uh, power of uh, innovation can be uh, promoted. 
And the, the policy challenge uh, will be how we can uh, in, uh, uh, increase uh, trust uh, by different stakeholders in technology and uh, 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 digital uh, society or economy. So I see no hand uh, raised, uh, but uh, uh, okay. So using this uh, uh, time, uh, uh, ask, uh, uh, I think there is a your hand uh, in the room actually uh, uh, physical okay. yes that someone has just moved on <laughs> I thought there was okay. someone that, that's great okay thank you very much uh, if you uh, uh, if you have any question or uh, comment please uh, uh, tell your name and affiliation and also please uh, tell us uh, 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 the address uh, uh, of the uh, question Yes, hello, my name is Rita from the European Chamber, and I have a question um, regarding da global data governance, because the, um, the democratic countries are a small minority on this planet, so I was wondering how you uh, suggest to deal with data flow and trust with the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, who wants to respond to this question? I'm happy to, to go first, Joichi, if it helps, and then um, yes, provide uh, some time for my colleagues. Um, yes, you're absolutely right that the that the, for example, the OECD is is uh, is 38 countries, um, but we work with many beyond that, and we have a long history of setting standards that are broadly adopted beyond just the OECD membership. So um, the, the privacy guidelines are an example of that. The recent AI principles are another example of that. Um, the tax agreement that the OECD just, uh, that is not my responsibility or in my domain is an example of that. And so um, I think our, at least uh, our aspiration is that we can set some baseline principles that could be um, could be widely applied for countries who who um, who take this a similar view and a similar values based approach. I recognize that it, it w may not it, may, it takes time to get there to something that is uh, you know broadly applicable around the world. But um, our goal is you know to 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 create something that um, could be foundational for for more than just the OECD membership. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Audrey. And I see uh, Dr. Yokozawa is uh, raising hand. Thank you. A very, very short answer to that. It's the, uh, I think the key is the business and the other stakeholders. So uh, I think even the, the government has, does not have a common recognition or common uh, ideology or a, a common economic uh, forms. But uh, the business is almost the same. So business is sharing, almost sharing. <laughs> There's not perfect in any in, 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 in anywhere, but the uh, the business almost shares the cons uh, the mind. Uh, we want to be free and open. So that's a common sense. So the I think the key is the business. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yokozawa. And uh, this question is very important, I believe. Uh, in, uh, uh, as uh, uh, she pointed out, uh, G7 or OECD is not working only for the member countries, but uh, the principles and the policy discussions are just uh, forming the core or most advanced uh, formation of the uh, com commonalities. And uh, we are always trying to, to outreach and share the uh, same principles with uh, other countries uh, across the world. And I have very good one uh, uh, experience on my own. Uh, when I was discussing uh, AI principles uh, uh, at G20, uh, the uh, AI principles was uh, discussed and uh, endorsed at OECD. And we imported uh, to uh, the same uh, uh, principles uh, into G20 discussion. Uh, 
uh, most countries welcomed, but uh, there were two countries uh, who were opposing until the last moment. Uh, I, I don't think uh, 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 it, it is uh, dishonorable to uh, name the, the countries. Uh, they are uh, India and South Africa, and they were very uh, careful to to endorse uh, these uh, principles because they were not uh, members uh, uh, of OECD. They didn't uh, uh, have enough time to understand. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, they, uh, after a lot of explanations, they agreed. Uh, to uh, uh, endorsing uh, the uh, G20 AI principles. But uh, at that time, India said, uh, because Indian government uh, hadn't uh, discussed their own national AI policy up, uh, uh, until that time, they didn't want to commit uh, to the uh, recommendation part to the government. So that's why we uh, put uh, the part two of the uh, AI principles outside to the G20 commitment. And uh, that was uh, done uh, at G20. And one year later, when I met uh, the uh, government uh, representatives from India, they said, they started policy discussion uh, uh, inside the government, and they were uh, 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 elaborating their own national AI policy based on G20 AI uh, principles. And they were very grateful for the discussion and the opportunity uh, when they joined the discussion with other G20 member countries, and they came to know uh, how the uh, human-centered AI principles should be, and the, how they can uh, incorporate those uh, discussions into their national uh, discussion uh, in their government. So I was very much impressed by the story, and uh, I, uh, I'm not following up uh, the uh, development of the uh, uh, national uh, India's national AI policy, uh, but uh, I, I, uh, I believe uh, uh, this experience uh, was uh, very much contributed uh, to their uh, national discussion. So I think uh, uh, there are a lot of chances for different countries to learn from each other. And uh, uh, even the uh, developed countries, such as the G7 members, uh, have a lot of room to learn from other countries. And the policy discussions, uh, not only from the government, but uh, we, are, uh, we need to learn uh, from other communities, uh, including business or civil society. So uh, multi-stakeholder discussion is always needed for uh, all different communities, including government. So uh, we have uh, a few minutes left, and I uh, want to 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 make a, a round table. Oh, okay. I see one more uh, hand raised. Uh, yeah. Timia, okay. Timia, uh, if if you have any comment, just a very quick one. As we are here in Poland, and I look around the room. I don't want to make a survey, but from the faces that I see, I assume that perhaps maybe half of the room uh, lives in, in OECD or G7 countries. Um, uh, a lot of you uh, probably don't, uh, but the IGF is a place for such discussions to learn principles, initiatives that are coming out uh, from various places of the world, share that knowledge. Um, share that information um, between all of us, discuss it, um, learn from it, uh, contribute to it, um, and then take that back home, whether you are from a business or a civil society organization or or any, any other type uh, of stakeholder group. But that's the way and that's the value of forums such like such as the um, IGF to take those discussions and, and share it in, in home countries and, and try and arrive to, to commonalities. So um, just a shout out to, um, to the IGF uh, and, and other multi-stakeholder conversations like this one that bring us all together. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, that's why we need to um, uh, even develop the IGF uh, framework uh, uh, to enable the uh, participation from Global House and the other uh, countries uh, across the world. So uh, we have uh, probably five minutes left, and I want to make a uh, uh, tour the table uh, 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 for five uh, speakers to make uh, final comments, uh, including your voluntary uh, commitment. Uh, 
uh, for the future work uh, for next uh, few, uh, years. So I start with uh, probably Gosia. Thank you very much, uh, Yuji. Thank you to all of the um, speakers today and, uh, and those there in the room and, and online for the participation um, in today's discussion. And I think building on what we have just said, uh, I think I just want to reiterate the UK's strong commitment to not only continue um, building on what we've achieved uh, since really 2019 and Japan's G20 uh, establishment of the concept of data free flow of trust and then our work throughout the following years, including um, the UK's presidency, but also the, that really strong commitment to making sure that we do this um, with the different uh, communities um, around the table. So the multi-stakeholder approach is absolutely critical, uh, not only on, on the aspects of data governance, but, but uh, internet governance, um, AI um, and, and, and other policies um, to, to do with the digital economy and digital society. Um, and I think as uh, we have uh, just said, working with businesses um, and working with wider communities um, and a wider set of countries is, is absolutely critical as this is a, a global um, um, cooperation and coordination, not only uh, that that is being proposed by either G7 or, or the OECD countries. Um, from the UK's perspective, again, uh, we're absolutely committed to making sure that as we engage with, with others, we bring those uh, principles and those um, frameworks that we uh, decide on within that smaller uh, sort of community um, wider. And that really is to do with, with any of the four or, or wider sort of component, components of the, of the roadmap. So on the telecolization measures, making sure that we build an evidence base uh, that we understand the impact and therefore that we um, uh, are able to come up with, with policy responses that, that, uh, that, that can deal with, with, the, um, with those uh, localization measures to ensure that, uh, that businesses can, um, um, can improve and, and, and act within those, um, uh, those different alternative policy responses. Um, in terms of regulatory cooperation, again, uh, we really do want to drive forward um, that cooperation and making sure that there is best practice uh, case studies so we can um, understand better um, how to enhance cooperation on data governance and data protection and how we can identify the opportunities to overcome the different the differences but also to explore uh, more the commonalities um, in regulatory approaches um, and uh, on that specifically when it comes to government access to personal data held by the private sector as been mentioned uh, before by the speakers, we're very much committed to, to ensuring that uh, we do have that common um, sort of benchmark uh, for industry to be able to, to understand how uh, legitimately and with trust um, access that data and, and, um, and again support the aims and objectives of this, um, of this work. Um, and lastly, when it comes to data sharing, again, and, and the collaboration around um, uh, uh, kind of making sure that we um, understand uh, the priority areas where data sharing have the most uh, potential for delivering societal benefits, including, um, you know, anything from, from transport, net zero emissions, innovation, um, research, science, education, um, to name just a few, uh, that, will, that will continue. And, we, and um, Yuchi, as you mentioned, um, you know, every country has uh, their own different um, regulatory uh, regimes and uh, and we also only published our national data strategy last year and continue uh, through this year with um, a public consultation around um, GDPR and and uh, how we can improve on on what we had uh, seen before what the UK will be able to do now after um, uh, the, the, the the initial consultation um, it, it doesn't really matter because we can still find interoperabilities and um, and be able to uh, to exchange and and um, um, and uh, collaborate despite um, the the variety of, of regimes based on the commonalities and on uh, on those interoperability frameworks that we work on together. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, uh, Christine. Uh, what about the German, Germany's uh, yeah. perspective? Yes. Well, thank you very much again. Um, it was very, very interesting and inspiring to hear all, all the different uh, views for the way forward and uh, where the focus uh, should lay. Um, uh, for, for us, uh, for, for the German government, uh, we uh, very much hope that we can now tie in with the success of, of the 
British G7 um, presidency also in, in the regard of, of um, free flow uh, with data. And uh, well, the, the next year will will show um, uh, how, how this uh, will be done. But um, all together for us, I would like to repeat that uh, um, the multi-stakeholder approach um, in all aspects of internet governance is very important um, uh, for Germany and also in uh, in the G7 process. Um, it is important that we we hear um, the, the input uh, of businesses and of, of society and all the various um, groups. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now I invite uh, Audrey for your perspective. Thank you, Yoichi. I'll be brief just to say that, um, you know, we really try to play the long game and, and take off a long term view of things. And in order to do that, we're very committed to building the evidence base um, to help support better policies around uh, data, data flows, data governance. Um, and I think our, you know, almost 40 year history with the privacy guidelines is evidence of that, but also other instruments that we are developing and trying to develop. Um, so I think it, you know, that's the contribution that we overall uh, strive to make is to, to putting the evidence in the hands of the policymakers and making recommendations, uh, obviously directly to the OECD members, but also with the hope that they can apply more broadly uh, to the global environment. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, the time is uh, uh, running out, but uh, just uh, uh, a few words uh, by uh, Okozawa Sensei and the team here. Well, just, just one word. Uh, let us continue this discussion to build forward better. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And Jimia? Thank you very much. Uh, my one word is collaboration. Collaboration within governments, which includes also national security agencies, law enforcement, and other branches of governments. Collaboration between governments and collaboration between governments and the private sector. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So time is uh, time has run out, but uh, I believe uh, discussion was very productive and very uh, uh, future uh, looking. So thank you very much uh, participation uh, to all the speakers and uh, to the audience. And uh, I believe uh, we can continue our collaboration. So thank you very much. Uh, the session is uh, over. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.